Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and it gives me a great deal of pleasure to rise and speak in support of Bill 11, the Witness Security Act. And uh, I think this is a bill pro uh, that's going to complement the current federal witness protection program, and it's by establishing a, a provincial program that's tailored to the particular needs of, uh, in uh, my mind, uh, Alberta justice. And the legislation will um, allow the Crown if and local police agencies uh, to provide uh, short-term security for witnesses who are feeling uh, a little bit apprehensive, uh, apprehensive, apprehensive about testifying in court. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Witness Security Act that's currently under the Federal uh, Act uh, works very well and uh, I remember when I was in estimates with uh, the Justice Minister and some of the questions I had to her about this particular program was who was going to pay for this particular uh, act. And at that time, if, if my memory serves me right, uh, I recall her telling me that it was up to the, the police. And I, uh, I then said to the uh, minister that whether the province pays for it or the police pay for it, it's still taxpayers' money. And I mean, as a government, we do give money to the provincial police force, and we also uh, give money to the municipalities who in turn will be paying for the police force. And we were trying to get some costs in regards to what this would cost uh, the province uh, to enact this particular piece of legislation. And because it's new, I, I wanted to find out, you know, if uh, the minister had any idea of how many people would be uh, entering the witness um, uh, program, if she had any idea who would be uh, entering the witness program, uh, to get some kind of idea of uh, the resources that were required. There's no doubt that we need to uh, have something like this. Uh, because I think it is important that we do protect witnesses who've got some apprehensions or some concerns about going to court. And you could tie that into gang-related activities where you've got one gang member uh, deciding that they want to testify against another gang member. And uh, fear of intimidation uh, am amongst the gangs or organized crime uh, is something that a particular individual who has decided to come forth and testify against another gang member is something that, quite frankly, that they should be concerned about because one just needs to read the papers and see how they are taking care of another gang member when they don't like uh, interference on their drugs or, or um, any of the trafficking that they're doing, whether it's prostitution, and uh, they simply decide to uh, take them out in the streets, which again is, is a problem for uh, the, the general public. So we support this bill, and uh, like what the minister's trying to do, I think she's uh, uh, done an admirable, admirable job in trying to do what's important to Albertans and uh, bring forward what needs to be done, especially when we're dealing with the issue of organized crime and gangs because, uh, quite frankly, they're out of control in this um, province and they need to be addressed. What I think needs to be answered from the minister is some of the things that she set up that uh, on the witness security coordinator, on the witness security panel, and I'm sure as we listen intently to the debate, she'll provide us um, more information. Is there going to be any collaboration between what the federal government is doing under their witness program compared to what we will be doing under our witness uh, protection program? Because we have uh, federal RCMP in this province that are here, and I don't know the exact numbers, that are dealing with some of this criminal activity. So. Where does the money kick in from the federal government? Where does the money kick in from the provincial government? Is there going to be a coordinated approach with the federal government in regards to this witness pro um, program, considering that we have uh, specialized teams in this uh, province who are under the police jurisdiction that uh, are going after these gangs? I know when I was uh, the Solicitor General, I formed the IROC team, which is the Integrated Response to Organized Crime, and not sure 
uh, if that's still in place, but it was hugely successful in going after these. I had the opportun opportunity at the time um, to uh, be able to see some of the takedowns, see some of their uh, uh, plans on actions on taking down organized crime, and I know that the former Solicitor General uh, was just as strong in carrying that forward, and if I recall, and he may want to respond, I think he expanded it. So um, I don't think we need to have, this is the federal government, this is the provincial government. What is the federal government doing on their witness protection uh, versus what the provincial government is doing on, on their witness pro uh, program? Are we going to have a coordinated approach with our federal government? Um, so I think those are some questions that I would like to have answered to find out exactly what our responsibility is under provincial jurisdiction versus what the federal government is under their federal jurisdiction. Uh, there's no question that uh, we want to get rid of this uh, organized crime and, and gang-related activities, obviously, but for peace of mind for me, uh, I need to know exactly the parameters of what's going to be operated on. So with that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'll sit down and I'll listen to the debate and I look forward to the Minister possibly in committee to address some of those issues. So thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I, and I want to uh, thank the Minister for standing up and speaking to some of our issues. And I think that's what's important about democracy is clarity. And some of that clarity wasn't so clear prior to us getting up and asking questions. So uh, what the minister has provided is, of course, is some clarity, and, and we appreciate that. I guess uh, the only couple things, and I was madly taking notes, and the minister is exactly right, that in the committee we have the opportunity to take this one step further and ask. So um, just... I get, again, some of my concerns, and I addressed that in the beginning when I spoke up, is about the federal issue. And the minister spoke very passionately about the reason why the federal wasn't working was because it was costly, and it was the length to get into, uh, in, to get into the witness program, if I, if I understood her correctly. And I guess I'm going to ask the minister again to respond to what is she doing at the federal issue to ensure that the federal government if, uh, has this um, uh, ability to be tough on crime, how she's going to move that forward to say, look, we know it's costly, we know it's, uh, it's lengthy to get in. I mean, quite frankly, that's unexcusable if we're trying to protect not only Canadians but Albertans. And uh, if a, a province like Alberta can come up with a, 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 a bill or a law that is going to one have police identify criminals who are prepared to come uh, for it, two the ability to provide them a witness protection in a very short period of time, as she indicated, and uh, if they need pr uh, protection for 40, uh, 48 hours to think about. I am having trouble, quite frankly, understanding why the federal government can't do that because it means perfect sense and perfect logic to me. So I want to just have on the record, if I may, uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the minister for standing up, speaking very pa passionate about uh, how she believes in, uh, how much she believes in Bill 11 the Witness Protection Act. Uh, I appreciate, quite frankly, her clarity, and I look forward to some more debate when we get into committee. Uh, I think it's important to, um, as the MLA, to be able to answer these questions to, uh, to my constituents on why we're bringing this forward, and I think the debate and the discussion has, has been, quite frankly, in my mind, very good, so uh, I just wanted to thank the minister. I'm sure she'll provide the answers in regards to the federal and I look forward to hearing more about how the police have identified, quite frankly, criminals in this province that have said they're prepared to come forward but they just want that little bit of safety zone so that they can think about uh, whether they're going to testify against uh, their associates. So, thank you.